Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock here for Ellen Hudson to bring you watercolor tips. And today we're going to talk about something that is deceptively simple. It's much harder than it looks like it would be, which is a flat wash. A flat wash is basically watercolor that's in a large flat area. It can be a rectangle, it can be a background, it can be an area on a stamp design. There's a lot of different ways you can apply a basic flat wash, but there are times when you'll want a solid, straight up, no variation kind of color. And that's what a flat wash will give you. You can do it with a round brush as I'm doing here. And I wanted to do specifically with a round brush so you'd see that you can do it. It's a little tougher when you get into large paintings to do it with that. And you might wanna try a flat brush to do that or a mop brush but we're gonna just work with a round brush today. You wanna to use as large a round brush as you can get away with and still feel comfortable getting into these tiny areas around the edge of a box or whatever the shape is that you're coloring in. The reason is because you want as few of tiny strokes as possible. If you used a really tiny brush, that wouldn't work. Now the one on the left was pretty well full color. This one on the right, I'm gonna do something specifically to make a mistake. I'm watering my color down some, and you can definitely do a wash with a watered down color. But I wanna show you something that I have made the mistake with a number of times, which is not having enough paint already mixed. So then I'd have to, in the midst of this, if I decided I wanted to go in and repair some area and add in a little drop of something else to fix something, I'd go off and mix my paint and end up mixing too much water in it. And water in watercolor will push out these blooms. And it's one of those things you just need to be careful with if you're going to do, and I'm sorry about the shaking of the tripod, I don't know why it's doing this. Um, you wanna mix enough color to do the entire area that you're painting. So you want all of it in the brush, you want the whole brush saturated with that mix of color. So you don't want a wet brush that just has the color on the tip if you're gonna do a flat wash because if you push down on the brush, what you'll get is squishing water out onto your paint and that's when you'll get the bloom as opposed to squishing paint out onto it when you press the brush down. So I hope that that's helpful. It's something that I discovered recently because I like to add extra water to things sometimes by pressing on the brush and it occurred to me that's why I struggle with flat washes because if I, if I mix all the color up and the whole brush is completely saturated with it, then it's gonna work better. I'll show you again with an example here with a much more um, watery color. This yellow ochre is well watered down, but it'll still do a great flat wash. And the entire brush, all of the, the bristles, not just the tip, are saturated with that color, which means if I accidentally press too hard or if I wanna get more color out of the brush and press harder, I can do that without adding a big pool of water that's gonna bloom out on my, my paper. And blooming is what that little splooge looks like when you, when you have a lot of water that just pours into your solid area. And you can see I dipped back into the same paint and I have the same concentration. So it's gonna work just perfectly to match the two sides to each other. Now when I do swatching for any kind of swatch book or swatch cards or anything, and I am creating a little swatch set for myself with all of these techniques I'll be sharing here on these Sunday videos, then I like real world samples. Just coloring a square of something doesn't tell me much, but I'm stamping an image. This is one of the Ellen Hudson stamps. You can stamp any image you want on your little swatch card. You can put these into two by two, sheets which there's a link to that in the description down below so you can go get yourself some of those sheets to put these two by twos in there's a downloadable that's going to be on the blog so you can download a little thing you can glue onto the back of this so you can remember some technique tips to put alongside with your little swatch or you could just punch a hole in it and glue the piece to the back side and put it on a little ring and then keep it handy so you remember some tips for these techniques. I've also created a graphic that is pinnable that you can put onto your Pinterest page and be able to remember your tips 
So you can go grab that from the blog as well. There's a link in the description. And I will see you next Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye-bye.